Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, this is our third coffee break with the local publisher. Um, and if any of you know me and know the bookstore, um, we really like to stick with our local people. And Laura is local, Forest Avenue Press is here in Portland. And I met Laura at Pub West. I think it was. In Santa Fe. Yeah. In Santa Fe. That was so fun. <laughs> um, but Forest Avenue Press is also uh, filled with locals. Um, and they have amazing books. We've just did an event with um, Jackie Hollis and her book, This Particular Happiness. Did I get that right? Yeah. yeah um, and, uh, another book we sold really well is Ale House at the End of the Road with Stephen Allred. So there's all kinds of local goodness. Um, the one book which is even closer to home um, per million by Julia Stoop. Um, the illustrator for that cover is Gabriel Liston, and he's my neighbor. So um, we like to stay local. Lara's going to talk about some of her Forest Avenue press books that are coming up, and then um, some future projects that she's working on that should be out. They're coming out really soon, right? When One's coming out and one is from another press. So, well, two are from another press. Yeah. Okay. Take it away. Excellent. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, I'd like to start by talking about the Royal Abduls uh, by Rumi Zakoya. She is a Portland author. You may know her through Literary Arts. This is her debut novel, and it came out on May 12th. So just, what, last week, two weeks ago, I think? Yeah. <laughs> um, and this book is an incredible masterpiece. I'll show you the beautiful cover on the back that our designer Gigi Little did. There's Ramiza looking fierce and powerful. Uh, this book is about a family of um, Muslim, Muslim Indian Americans living in Washington, D.C. a couple years after 11. And it's very much a story about Amina, um, what it, the protagonist, and her relationship with her nephew, Omar, who also has a point of view. And Omar is really trying to question his identity and interrogate who he is in the world, especially with what he has read on the news and heard about anti-immigration and anti-Muslim sentiment in particular. And Amina moves to Washington, D.C. for a job in what turns out to be a pretty misogynistic workplace. And she doesn't really know about kids, doesn't have kids, doesn't think she wants kids and ends up befriending Omar and kind of taking a lead role in helping him learn about his identity. And there are so many discs and moments in this book, just so beautifully heartbreaking. And Amina as a character, a very difficult woman. And I want to use that word difficult because it means different things to different people. But Isa was submitting this book places, one of the pieces of feedback she got was that Amina was too difficult. And to me, that's one of my favorite things about her because we need complicated women. We need characters who are not cardboard. We need <laughs> to, characters who are challenging the status quo in their workplaces and what, a, and what their cultural identities are and what they could be. And Amina just has so much personality and I love her so much. She's why I fell in love with the book and her relationship with Omar as well. Um, so that's out and now nationally. And that book is super close to your heart for a lot of reasons. It is. Uh, Ramiza has terminal cancer and we were able to get her book out into the world in March before actual pub date here in Portland, thanks to wonderful booksellers in Portland and our sales team at PGW helping us get it out. And I just feel so grateful that we got to launch it with her still being in the world a week or two weeks ago. Um, and I want to add to you, today we got a reader response that really says so much about this book and what it means to me and to many people. Uh, a reader called Kristen Noreen wrote, this is a mature life's work book, fully realizing a major talent. And I just love that so much because this is her book and this is this is the chance for her voice to be in the world. And I just feel so lucky to be a part of it and so devastated too. 
Yeah, you're making me tear up. Uh, I, <laughs> I know. Oh my goodness. Cry babies. We're cry babies. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful book. Um, you can buy it from my store. The link is in the um, chat. And then your next book, uh, trying to find, I haven't mastered yet how to put the covers up. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, forget it. I'm not even going to try. A small crowd of strangers. I have this beautiful art. This is Joanna Rose's second novel. Her first novel came out about 20 years ago, um, and it's called Little Miss Strange. And I have to tell you, when I started letting booksellers know about this book and authors know about this book, I kept getting, oh, I've been waiting. I can't wait. I'm so excited because she has so many friends and fans in, nationally uh, <laughs> and so many people who really love Little Miss Strange and wanted to... She she just wrote, I've been waiting to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, we girl. are so excited. I, I told my sales team that if there's any book that can withstand a major political election and a pandemic, I really truly believe <laughs> Joanna Rose's Small Crowd of Strangers can do it. This book is so heartwarming. And there's a dog. Here, let's see. His name is Bullfrog. Uh, the protagonist, Patty Ann, is a librarian and a dreamer. And she's really a voice for all of us who get a little carried away by enthusiasm and maybe lose our way sometimes. Um, she ends up marrying a man who, as it turns out, is a fundamentalist Catholic. And as he is going to uh, abortion protests, she is working at a new age bookstore and kind of tiptoeing toward Buddhism. <laughs> so it's very much about how the world around Patty Ann, how she sees it, and how as she starts to see herself differently, she starts seeing the world differently too. And the book starts in Montclair, New Jersey, which is actually next door to my <laughs> town. And I basically grew up in Montclair. I graduated from a school in Montclair. And I'm also it, from New Jersey, not I, from Montclair, <laughs> from Trenton. It's a Jersey book. I love it so much because I know where she's writing about, but then the characters also move to St. Paul, Minnesota, and eventually Patty Ann heads to the west coast of Canada on a journey that shifts her more into her inner self and her inner being. And it's just, it's absolutely beautiful. And it's funny. And I think that one of the people who said something that I really just keep carrying around with me is our sales rep, Cindy Heideman at PGW. That's she true. said, this book, I think, saved my life. And I think it's saving my life right now to be able to work on it. So I'm super grateful. And Joanna is also local to Portland. Uh, people know her through writers in the schools and through the Pinewood table where Stephen Allred co-teaches. And she's been a mentor and an inspiration and a dear human in the literary community for so many years. I just, I'm even getting a little choked up. Wow. I just feel so lucky that I get to publish this book. And I have ARCs available for those of you who are authors or booksellers looking for copies. Uh, I'd be happy to send one your way. So two questions. Yes. Um, when does the book land? Ah, yes. Uh, September 15th. Awesome. You can pre-order on my website. Uh, two rivers and you then um, <laughs> that the dog so i always think it's brilliant to put a dog on the cover um we our book club read the friend by sigrid nunez and everybody loved the cover because there's a giant um great dane on the cover so book dogs with dog covers no book covers with dogs i'll get it yeah um it's a great idea well this dog was inspired by a real life dog Joanna had many years ago. And oh. she sent photos of the original bullfrog to her Gigi Little. And Gigi adjusted the ears and the facial expression and the colors to get him just right. So uh, we all we all love this dog. <laughs> that's, that's the question about the link. So I'm going to um, put the link in the chat again. It's at the top. I think you can scroll up, but um, there it is again. Excellent. Can you do the questions on your side or am I the question? I, 
I don't see any questions, but okay. I can see your link. So still practicing with all these virtual platforms. Well, that's I had to email Christine and say, how do I get in now to be able to do this? Because <laughs> new to a lot of it also. And I have to say, with independent bookstores and independent publishing, we are all about getting together in person. And I think that's been a really hard thing to carry on and know that we can't get together in person right now. So I appreciate this opportunity so much. And Christine, you said this really isn't, the technology isn't really what you business to do, uh, but we're also grateful that you're doing it because it, it just matters. And, and it makes me feel hopeful in a way that many things are not making me feel hopeful right now. Uh, well, the truth is, here, no, completely transparent. I was so tired of people ordering books from 1996, 2003, that I thought, how, how can I get people to know about the new books so that they'll either pre-order them or buy them and not you know, have to manage telling them, oh, that book is no longer available and all of that stuff. So it turned out to be a really good thing. Um, it seems successful. We are selling books. Um, so yeah, um, now I'd like to talk about your zine. That's a whole new world for you. Yeah. So this is actually a zine put out by microcosm and it's done anonymously, um, a by local a publisher, uh, a local publisher here in Portland. And it's about a, uh, well, at the time the child in the book or in the zine was 10 years old and uh, it tells her story of being bullied to an extreme degree in elementary school. And in addition to telling the story, she wrote it with her mom. Uh, it, it connects what happened to her in her real life to lessons and learnings and ways she changed to be in the world in an empowering way that honors her identity. Uh, the child has autism and she never backed down from her convictions that everybody belonged in the classroom. And I think just from what I've read and from, from knowing the family that life was harder for her because she didn't back down. So this is sort of the, the flag in the, in the firmament of education saying that Kids who don't fit into the mold sh should be safe at school, strong at school. And it's it's written for a couple audiences, I think. It's written for kids who are also dealing with severe social pressure. And it's also for kids who are kind of on the margins of that, who maybe need to learn why it's important to be an ally or how to be an ally. And especially for middle schoolers and, and high schoolers, um, there are many pieces in here about it's okay to own your what happened what has happened to you own your differences own who you are your neurodivergence your weirdness love your body show your scars is a chapter so it's very sweet and um joe beal over at microcosm published it and it has a really pretty back cover with some blurbs from a uh, local author bart king and a local educator uh, deborah peterson so i highly recommend it for those of you who have kids or um, you know, even are looking back at your own school situation or want, and want a bit of hope and inspiration too, because this kid never backed down. She kept going and, and this book, the zine says, says how and why. So that's awesome. Um, we also partner with another uh, local organization called Reading is Resistance. Oh yeah. And they're all about social justice in the schools and in classrooms and, um, inclusivity and diversity. So I think I'm going to recommend that to um, the uh, director. It's a really great organization. Excellent. It sounds incredible. I've been on their website since I think you shared. Yeah. One at a previous uh, Crowdcast event. So. Yeah, they're doing um, a summer reading book club uh, with middle grade NYA and then a YA grown ups club. And they talk, they have um, materials to help parents talk about these hard issues with their kids. Because parents are, you know, they're like, ah, I don't know, it's awkward. But there's um, a lot of starting points. And um, that's, so, that's so great. I think in a lot of these conversations, especially about differently abled kids, it's often the parents who have the voice. And I think that's one of the things I love and why I wanted to recommend this book, The Kid Has the Voice. 
Yeah. Um, the mom, the mom co-authored it with her to help amplify her message and tie pieces together into a uh, zine context. But she, it's her voice and it's her story and she survived and she's like, you shouldn't do this and you should do this. And it's important to stand up. Um, if you, if you see or hear a racist act, you have to speak out. You can't just watch it and look the other way. That's not how to be an ally. So, um, and then also I, I just turned to this, but I love this one. We all make mistakes because I think a lot of the time in school, um, it's, a, it's just important to remember that all of us, we all make mistakes and we're, none of us are perfect in any of this, especially when it comes to, to speaking up about social justice. But the important piece is to try. And if you mess up, you talk about it and you try better the next time. So, yeah, we all make mistakes. <laughs> Shame is not helpful. Um, no. And now your, your last book is the book that you're working on currently, right? So this book is actually coming out from uh, Central Avenue Publishing, and it's called Alone Together. And the subtitle is Love, Grief, and Comfort During the Time 19. And this is the brainchild of an author I know, Jennifer Haupt. And she put out a call on social media saying, do any authors want to write about what it's like right now? And a lot of people responded. In fact, so many responded, this is going to be a huge collection. And I believe she has 90 contributors. And in that September 1st, I happen to know the publisher, Michelle, through, um, through PubWest, I think, and probably also IBPA. And I offered to do a little bit of consulting work and brainstorming and helping with the project. So I've done some work on it, but it's not mine. Um, and I just, I think what, what Jennifer and Michelle have done so far is incredible. They have a great group of diverse voices involved, uh, a variety of perspectives um, and a variety of formats. There are essays. I don't know if there are stories around. I think there might be short stories also, but there are definitely essays and poetry and interviews. So it's a mix of content and it's really writers getting together to benefit. And this is the other way this whole project came about to benefit independent bookstores. All the proceeds for this anthology are going to Bink, which is the book industry charitable foundation. And it helps booksellers in need. And when the virus hit and bookstores closed, lots of booksellers reached out, needed a lot of help. There have been some really wonderful fundraising opportunities uh, to help Bink. Um, and Jennifer decided this was a way that she could do her part. And some of the other, some of the authors are Nikki Giovanni, Kwame Alexander, Jamie Ford, Pam Houston, Luis Alberto Urea, and Portland's own Lydia Yuknovich. Yeah. So, so I'm I missed the part. Uh, who's publishing it? Grand our uh, Central Avenue is publishing it. Okay, and it'll be available everywhere. It'll be available everywhere. They are distributed by IPG. So yeah. you can awesome. get IPG books. You can get alone together and it's coming out as an ebook and a paperback on September 1st. Yay. And I have an essay in it too. So I submitted. Awesome. Yeah. Um, let's see. We have questions. Oh, I love the zine. That was the, that's a comment um, in the question box. And then Nancy also just said um, that she's, she just got her copy of the zine and she's going to give it to her daughter who has an 11 year old niece. Uh, anyway, she loves the voice in the story. So that's that's awesome. That's so cool. I wonder if you all would mind being, I wanna try the poll. You can take a poll. So I wanna see, um, let's see, I'm gonna create a poll and I'm gonna say, how many people are publishing? I haven't done this before. I haven't used this part of it. Well, I just found the questions while you're working on your poll. So <laughs> I can see the questions too, it turns out. Let's see. Please fill out this. Okay, let's see if this works. Great poll. Visible. Can you see the poll? Yeah, I can see it. I voted. 
Got some more votes coming in. I think I love this platform. <laughs> yes, Roseanne Perry, you count. <laughs> Roseanne always counts. Hi, Roseanne. <laughs> That's so cool. It's about even, half and half. Um, okay, how about it? Authors and teachers count. Yes. Well, I don't know. Maybe not. Um. <laughs> you also work at a bookstore, Roseanne. Um, I want to also know, what do you think about this platform? Well, I'll speak up while you're making the poll and say that um, I don't do new things very well. I like to be, I like to do things that I've done before, <laughs> uh, but having used it today, I do feel like it has a lot of benefits and bells and whistles that spending a little bit more time on it, I think would, would make me really like it and get comfortable with it. Yeah. So it's interesting. Every time I use it, I learn something new. Um, the biggest complaint people have had is, you know, getting set up, registering it. Um, it works best if it's, if you use it on the app. Um, <laughs> look at how many fun people we have. Um, but the great thing is that it records it so people can watch it again later. Um, and we've been debating about going with the super fancy version. If you go with the super fancy version, it broadcasts live for you to Facebook and YouTube. So I think, I think we're gonna up our game and do the live broadcast part. So um, yeah, does anyone have any more questions before we sign off? Um, it was great having you, Laura. Thank you so much for joining. Oh, thank you so much, Christine. We so love our indie bookstores. I really, when, when everything shut down, I really kind of, fell apart because I couldn't imagine what publishing would look like or without my booksellers. Um, I founded my company to get people together inside bookstores. And so having this opportunity really just warmed my heart and made me feel better. So. Oh, thank you. Thanks for showing up. I mean, book people are great. You know, we, we love books. We love to talk about books. We love to talk to each other about books. We like to sell each other books. Oh, did you read? You know, I mean, it's really, it's a, it's a great industry, and I'm, um, I'm so happy to be part of it. Well, we're happy to have you in Two Rivers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, everybody. Oh wait, there's one more question in the poll. In the. Oh, thank you, thanking us for making their day. Thank you, Jeanette. Um, oh, thanks everyone. Thanks everyone, and um. Tune in next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.